Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Reindeer. Had a very shiny nose. Like the light bulb. What's your favorite color? Ah! Rudolph. Hey! Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Merry Christmas! Let's have a parade. Santa's coming to town. Santa! I know him. everybody thank you if we haven't met yet my name is Shannon and I am the well kids pastor here and I'm so excited for today we have such a fun service planned for you it's gonna be great to start off I want to have a little bit of a gift exchange with my friend Bree 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 come here yeah I know but I need you to come here let's have a hand for Bree everybody Merry Hi. Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. Oh. You excited? Yep, I'm a little nervous. Oh. Hi. That's weird. Hi. Okay. So, uh, where's my present? Hi. 
Right now? Yeah. I mean, you just told me about this like 15 seconds ago. But oh. I don't, have, I don't have one yet, but probably later. Okay. I mean, that's not yeah. hurtful at all. Um, <laughs> okay, well, I got you something. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I know. Okay, just go for it. Yeah, there's, there's stuff in the bag. It's not just the bag. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. It's a new name tag. Oh, that's not for you, actually. Ooh, sorry. I remind, it was a reminder for me. If you're a guest here this morning, we're so glad you're here. And if you have anything you need or any questions throughout the morning, um, we'd like you to find someone with one of these blue name tags. They can help you with anything you need. And we hope that you enjoy our service. Good. Okay. Good. All right. For real. So excited. This is it's so good fun that you guys are part of this. Oh, are you serious? Sorry. Also not for you. Ooh, another reminder. <laughs> In the seat back in front of you or in your service guide that you grabbed on your way in, there's a connection card. And we just hope by the end of the service we'll have earned your trust and you would be willing to fill out one of these with your information so we can just say thank you for coming, shoot you an email, um, and just thank you for joining us for Christmas Eve service. So you'll have a chance to hand those in later in the service. So keep that in mind. This is a great gift for you guys. <laughs> it's awkward. Oh my gosh, this is like... Janet, this is exactly what I wanted. I've been saving Ooh. one of these because these are expensive. That was Actually, the, this is not also it's, also not for you. Oh, yeah. so sorry. Are you serious? It's my work computer, and I'm it's sure another Cassie, reminder. Are you okay with it? Oh. No, I. <laughs> I don't think that's, no. Um, another reminder for me to tell you guys that next Sunday, December 31st, is no service Sunday. So once a year after Christmas, we kind of take a break from our typical service, and instead we get to enjoy service online with our families. So Pastor Jerry has prepared an amazing message for you to watch next Sunday, and Pastor Cherie has recorded a great worship set for you. So next Sunday, we won't be meeting here, but you will have a chance to go online with your families from home and join us for service that way. So don't forget. And don't come here because we won't be here. So is the well gift going to be a new computer for everyone? I don't think so. You know, let me just make sure there's nothing else that shouldn't be in here. Uh, okay. There is one more reminder. I'm sorry. This is not for you. And, That's okay. You yeah. So, reminder, Super Bowl Sunday is Sunday, February 4th this year. We're so excited. Don Beebe's coming back to join us, which is going to be awesome. It's one of the best Sundays of the year to invite friends and family. We have a ton of guests, lots of fun, some prizes, football-themed treats, everything. It's a huge hit. So make sure you mark that on your calendar and invite everybody you know. Okay. It's, there's definitely a present. Okay. getting smaller. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm so excited. Gifts is my love language, so. <laughs> yeah, oh, it jingles. Boy. It jingles. Oh, boy. Oh. Shannon. This is very okay. big. Well, here. Let me, let me help you. <gasps> Are you kidding me? No. Don't you like it? Oh, wow. It's for us to wear together. I feel something, but. Yeah. It's I good. I don't know if like is it. <laughs> Shannon, I just feel like we've got a lot going on, Pastor Jerry, right? Yeah. And uh, so this is this is all wonderful. Uh, so, well, so Merry you, Christmas, yeah, Shannon. I think she Merry likes Christmas. it. So we'll take a picture later in the photo booth? Yeah. All right. All right. We have so much more planned for you, so let's worship again together. Merry Christmas, everybody.
will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. 
So a decree went forth that a census should be taken. Mary and Joseph traveled to their hometown of Bethlehem, the city of David. They were engaged to be married, and Mary was expecting a child. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and his life would bring light to everyone. Getting there just in time, Mary gave birth to a son in a stable. She wrapped him in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. That night, there were shepherds staying in fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the glory of the Lord surrounded them. His light will shine in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Don't be afraid, the angel said. I bring you good news of great joy to all people. The Savior, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. God's great love was demonstrated that while we were still enemies of God, he sent his one and only son to die for us. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of angels, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those with whom God is well pleased. Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And this is love, that he loved us first and his love pursues us and it runs us down.
You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not. Santa He's making a He's checking it Santa Claus is coming He's He knows when you're awake You better not pout, I'm telling you why. Great job, give yourselves a hand. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to the well. For those of you I have not had the privilege of meeting yet, my name is Jerry, and it is such a privilege to get to celebrate Christmas with you uh, this year. Have you ever thought about the words to that song? I was thinking about that song early in the season, and I got to thinking, this is, this is just alarming. <laughs> he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows if you're awake. He's watching you all the time, whether you're being good or whether you're being bad. This is the craziest Christmas song that was ever written. I don't know whose idea it was to take Santa Claus, the eternal spirit of benevolence and joy, and somehow transform him into Big Brother. <laughs> but actually, this is not the weirdest thing that I have seen or heard. Um, for those of you who don't know a lot about my story, um, I'm of German descent, and, and I actually grew up most of my life in Germany from the time I was uh, a little before six until uh, 17 years old. So all my formative years, all of my childhood memories are, are set in, in Germany. And uh, the Germans have a book uh, called Fruvelpeta, which is a holiday uh, classic. And, and literally translated, it means shockhead Peter. But the implication is um, sort of messy Peter, unkept uh, Peter, uh, kind of, you know, kind of disgusting Peter, if you will. And it's a book of, of cautionary tales uh, for children uh, about, um, you know, the consequences of bad behavior or, um, or, or bad decisions or bad habits. And so um, some of the, the classics in this book were like uh, Augustus, who refused to eat his dinner. And so, oh, he died. And his parents <laughs> are still trying to force soup on him even in death. And then, of course, there was little suck -a thumb who would not stop sucking his thumb, so a giant grotesque man came in and lopped them off with giant scissors. And, um, and what children's book would be complete without Harriet, the little matchbox girl, who burned to death? So, yeah, so this book, and I'm not making this up, this book was first published under this title, Funny stories with whimsical pictures <laughs> for children ages three to six. Heinrich Hoffman, the man who actually wrote and illustrated this book, did so for his three-year-old son's Christmas gift. And it became such a popular hit in Germany, go figure. And um, it's probably also why the Germans gave us psychotherapy because all of their children needed, needed counseling. So, um, so, so at the beginning of this book, this is actually the intro to the book. Let's, let's, th this is what it says. It says, when the children have been good, that is, be it understood, good at mealtime, good at play, good all night, good all day. In other words, when children are perfect, um, then, uh, then they shall have the pretty things that Merry Christmas always brings. But naughty, romping girls and boys tear their clothes and make a noise, spoil their pinafores and frocks, and deserve no Christmas box. Such as these shall never look at this pretty Christmas book. <laughs> I can just see little kids like tearing their clothes. No, I don't want to read the book. <laughs> so it does actually make sense then that the Germans would also give us the worst Christmas character and the worst Christmas tradition of all times, and that is Neck Ruprich. 
Nick Ruprich is a, uh, he's a buddy, he's a friend, he's sort of a counterpart to St. Nicholas in, in Germany, and he travels with him um, to, to bring presents of a kind to children. Now, now Ruprick does this. He actually has this giant bag of ashes that you saw, and he would use that or his walking stick or switches to physically beat children. And, and, and then um, if, if they were too bad, if they were too naughty, he would actually just shove them down into his bag and take them away. <laughs> so, so little kids um, growing up all over Europe on December 5th, um, we would stick out our shoes or our boots uh, outside of our door and, and hope that, that sometime in the night, St. Nicholas and, and possibly Rupert would, would come by and leave something magical in our, in our shoes or in our boots. Now, you needed to be asleep when this happened because if Rupert ever caught you awake, he would ask you to say all of your memorized prayers. And if you were shy or bashful or you didn't nail them specifically, he would beat you with his giant bag of ashes. And so no matter what, when you heard the little Christmas bells that were tied around Rupert's waist, you pretended you were asleep for fear of what might happen if you were, if you were still awake. But if you had been good, St. Nicholas would leave um, chocolates and fruit, nuts, uh, even little toys in your shoes. And my favorite when I was a little kid were these little golden chocolate coins. So I actually brought some just to share with you guys. Although I don't think I'm going to be able to get these to kind of everyone. Yeah, it's raining. Uh, so I've got some helpers that are coming and they're going to bring you guys some chocolate Santa Clauses from St. Nick. Everyone's like, don't, don't throw them at me. So always on St. Nicholas Day, you would get a chocolate St. Nick. So that was, that was one of our favorites. Now the problem for me was this. The problem for me every year on December 5th was that I was um, never, ever a good little boy. And so if you had not been good, Rubric would leave in your shoe either coal or, or a turnip or, um, or, or switches, willow switches, so that your parents could join in the fun and beat you two um, during the Christmas festivities and holidays. And so, um, and so when I was a little kid, I'm not making this up, they used to make bouquets of willow switches. And then what they would do is they would glue um, little toys and little chocolates and little candies just sparsely on this, you know, this bouquet of switches as a sadistic reminder to tell you, you came that close to getting nothing. <laughs> in some parts of, of southern Germany, primarily in Bavaria and down in Austria, uh, Rubrik was actually accompanied by or sometimes even replaced by Christmas demons that were known as Krampus. Yes, Merry Christmas to you too, Krampus. With the little children being whisked away in his basket and the anvil of switches. So, so here's my question. How in the world did anyone in Europe grow up loving Christmas? I mean, how is that even... How is that even possible? But here's the thing. Here in the United States, we've kind of toned down, we've tamped down some of these different traditions and some of these different ideas. But the truth is, we use a lot of the same tactics, shall we say, to try to coerce our children into good behavior this time of year. In fact, I saw a new tactic that is being deployed all across the country this year. And we actually have a video of this for you. So watch this. Do me a favor, Cooper. Can you go to the tree? There's a present that's wrapped in gold, and it says to ask Jane Cooper, can you go get it real quick? Daddy! Let me see it. No. Let me see. No! Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Cooper. I would like to see it, please. You smash it! I'm not going to smash it. Oh. Another one of your presents goes away. Sorry. <laughs> What's the matter?
Just so you know, this box was empty. There was nothing in it. Did you notice he said, there goes another one of your Christmas presents? <laughs> it's like, this is, this is a rhythm at their house. And it seems to be working. She learned, totally. That was, that was, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus. <laughs> Terrifying. This is what we do at Christmas, but Why? Why? What, what drives this for us? What drives these coercions? What drives these stories? What drives these characters? What drives these traditions for us? And here's what I believe with all my heart. I actually think that love is what is, is actually driving this for so many of us. Now, I know when I say love is what's behind this, that that sounds funny. It sounds strange, ironic. It sounds um, contradictory at the least. But, but here's what I think is going on. If you're still living at home with your parents. Let me just ask, how many of you here today are still living at home with your parents? Some of you, go ahead, raise your hands. It's okay if you're 30, raise your hand. So, all right, so, so some of you are, are, those of you who are still living at home with your, your parents, here's what I want you to understand. The only thing they want is for you to be good. That's all they want. They want you to get along with your brother or your sister. They want you to, to be nice. They want you to do good in school. They just want you to try your best. And the reason that they want that is they want others to experience when they're with you, to experience through you, to experience from you, what they fundamentally believe about you in their heart. And that is they think you're amazing. Everyone look at your neighbor and say, my parents do think I'm amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your, your parents love you. They think you're amazing. Everyone look back at your neighbor and say, my parents are right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And, and, here's, and here's what I want you to understand. It doesn't matter if your parents are 37 or your parents are 77 or 107. That never changes. Your parents want others to, to experience from you what they have believed about you since the very first time they held you in their arms. And so what really is driving this holiday, what is really driving our traditions, really is love. It's why we go nuts every year at Christmas trying to communicate our love, what we believe, how we feel to one another in, 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 ta in tangible ways, in, in physical ways. We want them to experience physically what we ultimately believe. One of the things I, I did love about our traditions growing up in Germany is that we have separated the person, the character from St. Nicholas from actually the celebration of Christmas itself. And so St. Nicholas Day is actually December 6th, and so he and Krampus come on December 5th. But on Christmas morning, the person who comes is the Christkind, the Christ child. It's the spirit of Christ that comes at Christmas time to bring gifts. And, and that's what really happened, isn't it? That's what we celebrate at Christmas, is that the Christ child came to bring gifts of life, of love, of light to men. And all these things, all of us have things in our life that make us feel undeserving, that allow us to sort of move into this season with a bit of dread, with sort of a dark cloud hanging over our heads, and it's formed into our traditions and the way that we talk. And yet God... God, our Heavenly Father, loved us so much. He hoped for us so much. He believed in us so much that he sent the Christ child to give us the gift of life and, and that that gift would actually set us free. In Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says, At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. And this was the, the first census that took place when Quinarius was the king of, or the governor of, of Syria. And all returned to their ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. 
He traveled there from a village, Nazareth, in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her, her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. And that night, there were shepherds staying in the field nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly, the angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of God's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will be great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you'll recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger, a, a food trough for animals. And suddenly the angel was joined in by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God, saying, Glory to God in his highest heaven and peace on earth to whom God is pleased. Peace to men because God, because God loves you. And the reality is that if love is really what is driving this, if love is what's driving it in us, if love is what's driving it in the traditions, if love is what was driving it for God, then the promise is, according to God's word, that love never fails. And so in the end, the tree, the stockings, the boots, the shoes, they're always filled. Despite whatever wrong we've done, despite whatever threats our parents gave somehow in the end, despite all of our behavior, all of our shame, the Christ child always showed up. And there was life. I like that. There's something right about that especially as we celebrate this, this holiday of Christ's coming. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, it says that love is patient and kind. It's not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It doesn't demand its own way. It's not irritated or irritable. It, it keeps no record of being wrong. It doesn't rejoice about injustice. It rejoices whenever... The truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful. And love endures through every, through, through any circumstance. Everything else in life passes away. Everything else falls apart. Everything else disappoints. Verse 13 promises that there are three things that last forever. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. And the Bible says that God is love. The only reason that we can know love is because God first loved us. And that God's love never fails. God's love never gives up hope, hope for you. God's love endures through any circumstance. There's nothing you could do. There's nothing you have done. There's nothing, there's nothing in your life that could separate you, create distance between you and God's love for you. And he didn't tell us, if you'll get your act together, there's going to be a good payoff. If you do everything right, then you'll have great things in your life. He didn't say that. He said, because I love you, because I believe in you, because I have hope for you, I will give you the gift of life, and I'm going to pay for it with the gift, with the life of my son, the Christ child. Romans 5.8 says this, that God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die while we were still sinners. While we were far off, God sent his son into the world to die so that we could know him. And here's what I want you to know. We don't go into this holiday season with this sort of thing over our head that if you're good, if you didn't make mistakes, 
if all of your life is in order, then you can expect something wonderful from God at Christmas. God says, listen, that's, that's about our hang-ups. Those are about our fears. God says to us, listen, I already sent my son. And everyone who calls on his name, everyone who allows the light and the love of Christ into their heart at Christmas experiences everything that my kingdom, that my life, that my love, that this gift has to offer. And so here's what I want you to know today. If you're sitting here this morning and you're thinking to yourself, my life this year has been rough or broken. There's a dark cloud hanging over my head. I want you to know before you leave this morning, that can begin to shift and to change. And so I'm going to ask everyone this morning to close their eyes and to bow their heads. And if the truth... If the truth is that there's some anxiety in your heart this morning about Christmas, about Christ, about your life, if as we move into 2018 there's a, there's a sense of hopelessness about your marriage, about your children, about your future, if you've got this thought running around in your head that as soon as I can get my act together, as soon as I can pull everything together, then things will change. If any of those are true for you, I want you to know you can be free from all of that. If you'd like to know Christ this year at Christmas, if you'd like to experience a love that surpasses anything else you've ever experienced, if you want to move into this Christmas holiday with only an expectation of God's best, with a sense of faith, a sense of hope, the knowledge that love never fails. If that's you today, would you let me know? Would you raise your hand? You can put it up and right back down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All over the room, thank you. Would you let this prayer be your prayer today? Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much that you came. And God, it isn't like the traditions that we've created, that we somehow have to earn or deserve your love. You came in spite of our weaknesses, in spite of our brokenness, in spite of our imperfections. You demonstrated your great love and that while we were still far away, while we were enemies of God, you came and laid down your life for us so that we could know life. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. The light of God, the hope of God, our faith in God, and your love that never fails. So let Jesus come again this year at Christmas, fresh and new. Fill my heart, fill my mind, fill my spirit. Lord, begin to change and reshape me into the man, into the woman that you created me to be and to become. To know your love and your will. To experience your kingdom, your life. Forgive me, God, for having wasted so much time pursuing a million other things. Thank you, God, that your love never gave up on me never gave up hope, never gave up faith. I love you, Lord Jesus. I bless you. It's in your precious name I pray. And everyone said amen. Can we just give the Lord praise for the people entering his kingdom? Well, in just a minute, our ushers are going to be coming, and this is going to be an opportunity for you to put your cards in the bucket. So if you're a guest with us today, you still have just a minute to go ahead and finish filling those out. If you'll give us your name and your email and just fill out that area mark new here, we're going to give you our no-hassle guarantee. We're not going to swing by the house or call. We're just going to shoot you an email thanking you for coming. And as the bucket comes by, you can just drop that in. If you just made a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, we would love to connect with you as well. 
And so if you'd grab one of our Connect cards and give us your name and email up at the top, about halfway down the card, there's an area that says, I made a commitment today. And you can just read over that and decide for yourself which one of those best fits the decision that you made today, and then drop that in the bucket as it comes by. Following service in the back of the auditorium, we have an area marked the next steps. And there we have a gift for you. It's a new believer's Bible. And so it's got the Bible, uh, all the scriptures, but in everyday language. So it's really easy to read and understand. And it's loaded with all kinds of extra material to help us sort of understand and unpack what we're reading as we're going through the Bible. It's yours. It's free. We hope that you'll take advantage of that today. Also, we want to let you know that we would love to have permission just to pray for you this week. And so at the very bottom of those Connect cards, there's a series of lines where you can let us know what's going on in your life, whether it's to celebrate with you something wonderful or just to come alongside of you in prayer. So as the buckets come by here in just a minute, you're going to want to drop those, those in. The ushers are coming forward. If you're a weller and you came today with a desire to give, we want you to know that you're welcome to do that. Anytime you give cash, we always recommend that you use one of the giving envelopes. Uh, If you are looking for some other way to give today, you can do that on the inside flap. There's all the instructions you need about how to do that. Or you can go online, come to thewell.org forward slash give and follow the prompts. The gifts that are going to be given today are all going to go towards scholarships for our students this summer, as well as to help us build a playground at an orphanage in Guatemala. And so if you'd like to contribute towards that, we encourage you to do it. You're welcome to do it. If you're a guest with us, please don't feel any obligation or responsibility to give. This service is just one of the ways that we want to say thank you and bless you and be a gift for you this year at Christmas time. I want to say a prayer just really quickly over our students, over this service. And and so I invite you just to close your your eyes and and your heart with me as we pray. Father, we just thank you so much for today and the opportunity we have to celebrate you. And Lord, we ask that you would just receive these gifts and that you would multiply them for your glory and for your name. Lord, we pray for the students that are going to be touched and impacted. We pray, Lord, for the kids that are going to get to play on the playground down in Guatemala. Lord, that you would bless them, that you would be with them. Lord, that it would open doors of opportunity for people who have been pushed to the margins of society and culture. And Lord, we ask that this year at Christmas that our hearts would be turned not only towards you, but to those who still need you. That our life, that our light would be a witness, a sign and a symbol to those around us. And Lord, that we would join not only into your life, but Lord, into your work. We bless you, Lord, today. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. 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 Well, we are, uh, as we enter into the, the blessing of Christmas, we're not just receiving what Christ came to do. We're also entering into it. Scripture says in John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning, the Word, Jesus, already existed. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, and God created everything through Him. Nothing was created except through Him. And the Word gave life to everything that was created. And His life brought light to all men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. And so as we, as we accept the gift of Christ, our life becomes a reminder, a sign and a symbol. We become bearers not, not just of his love, but of the light of Jesus. So this morning, we just invite you to stand for a moment, grab your candles. We're going to enter back into worship. And we invite you to share with us not just the love of Christ, but the light of Christ.
together in one more song. Christmas, everyone. Would you just raise your hands and receive a blessing today? 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you know God's love. May you know that his love never fails. And everyone said amen. 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 We'll see you December or January 7th. Thanks so much.